Hey guys, Kyle, the Death Knight of Anime here, bringing you my review for My Hero Academia Season 4, Episode 19. So, right out of the gate, we get a rundown of both the hero... We get a rundown from, like, in a video that was recorded by by Gentle a long time ago. We It's basically a rundown of all the... both the heroes and villains that have defined this current era or had an impact on it in some way or another. And the important one to pay attention to in this lineup, believe it or not, is not actually all for one. But the one the, the one the one you really need to keep in the back of your minds going forward is Destro and the Metal Liberation Army. Because going forward, those two names are gonna have the most significance on the plot. Like on the plot going forward. Especially when it comes to the villains and a certain villain group we know. Like, trust me when I like yeah, trust me when I say like like Destro and the, the Metal Liberation Army. That is, that 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 is pretty much going to be a, a well, pretty much a, a household. Uh, that is gonna that is gonna be a, a name that's a name that's, that's really going to be like an important key 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 figure in the in 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 in, in the development of this of the series and the world of My Hero Academia going forward. Now. Um, <clears throat> One now, one thing I need to talk about before going any further is the pacing of the episode. Because if you'll remember, um, in a previous episode, I talked about how someone posted on Twitter that just based off an image in the opening, we'd get we we we'd basically get the next arc immediately after this one in this se in this season. Like like we get the next arc like. In in bit we get the next arc if, in the next arc after this one in season four, but considering that only two chapters were adapted in this episode, chapters one seventy one and one seventy two, with with this arc basically going all the way up to one eighty three, uh, with this with this arc essentially ending at chapter one eighty three, and this being like episode nineteen, I. <clears throat> I'm really having a, I really believe that's wishful thinking at this point now, and in general, I'm just really having a hard time believing that this episode, that, that, that this season is going to, is going to basically cap off with that next arc, because, <clears throat> because the thing is, and, and, and maybe the next couple episodes will prove me wrong, but in, the, the thing is, just on, on a logistical level, in order to make this happen, they'll need to pick up the pace and adapt at least three chapters per episode going forward. So, and it's not impossible for this to happen at like at the bare minimum of three chapters. And it's not, I guess it's not impossible. There is a chance, but right now, but right now, I'm assuming this next arc that people have been talking about on Twitter is actually going to be like be the thing that that starts off season five i don't know like i said it's it's really dependent on on basically how how much faster like bones adapts uh, adapts the content going forward but i'm not entirely convinced right now that, that, that i'm not entirely convinced with only six episodes left that that, that the bulk of those episodes aren't going to be focused on this arc so yeah, I don't. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but I'm, I'm not exactly, I'm, I'm not exactly, I, I'm not exactly holding my breath on it happening either. <clears throat> like I, I think the next arc is going to be a season five opener, honestly. Um, <clears throat> and honestly, in some ways, like, like, like the next arc starting season five would honestly make the most sense because because season five onward is gonna be like. A major, because season five onward, is is gonna be like even more major, honestly. <clears throat> so, and is gonna have even more major events going forward, and a lot of that again does have to do with, with the introduction of like the Meta Liberation Army and, and uh, and uh, and Destro. So yeah, if so yeah, it would almost make sense in order to start cap off. In order to start season five with with the next arc, because it it would it would it would it would suit more more narratively that way I think. <clears throat> um. So. One thing, 
So one thing about this episode is that we get a look into the type of criminal Gentle is. And even though a lot of what he does might be silly and pointless, and just downright like, why the hell are you doing this? In some ways, it also showcases the collective nature of society and how we tend to sensationalize all these big events and people, but by, by and large, they can be, in many respects, inconsequential to our own lives, and it makes makes us forget about the, the smaller, like, smaller details going, the smaller details going on around us, and that have an actual impact on how we live. And and like with like for instance with with Stain being brought up here, he's he's labeled as a villain, but largely but but largely the only the only one he really but largely the only one he really impacts is basically are the heroes themselves. He doesn't actually impact like actual like citizens and people. Like he like I, I guess largely they're one and the same, but it, like again the, the heroes are sensations again heroes are sensationalized to the public so th th that's the reason why people respond to that but at the same time in terms of like how how stain affects like the average person in the society largely inconsequential and in a weird way gentle through being a much more small time criminal oddly he wants to bring focus back to back to those issues that back to those that actually affect Pete that actually affect your average everyday person uh, it's even if it is through criminal activity and again just judging and again just judging from the from like the comments on the video on his videos in this episode itself and on Crunchyroll he's not wrong we've, we've definitely become a little more we definitely we definitely give in to the, to the sensationalism a lot and we don't really I think appreciate some of the smaller details I think um, now now another thing with this episode is we get training between Izuku and All Might uh, but one key point Izuku brings up is that he wouldn't have won had Eri not been there and this is actually going to be a key point later on in this arc but we've gotten but we've gotten like a step forward with it as well like get, getting getting into the training because we we basically because we move on to the next step, which is developing Izuku's techniques, and it's here we learn that All Might he never even used 100% of his power. In fact, I think the only time we did see we did see him use 100% is in his fight with All for One, and this is something you kind of clue into eventually. But hearing out loud makes it all the more sense when you consider that All Might's buff form in itself was in his own way just a disguise and his way of storing up power in his body. So from there you have to imagine his so from there you have to actually imagine his act, <clears throat> his actual body would suffer even more than even more had he had he been constantly using 100% throughout the series. Of course, in this case for Izuku, the next step for him is learning is learning that exact same thing in order to distribute that power that power throughout his in distribute that power in his attacks. Uh, I mean, he and he's basically learned all the fundamentals. Now it's just applying that naturally to that. Now it's just applying all of those fundamentals like naturally and, and combining them in order to create, in in order in order to create his attacks now and and make sure that, that they don't like, he doesn't hurt his body in using them. Um, now side note, uh, but now now side note when it comes to the training though. One thing I wasn't much of a fan of is when Izuku unleashed that wave of air pressure through his kick. Bones took a little liberty with that scene I'm not a fan of because in the in the manga, it basically clearly shows that, that he that he unleashed the that he unleashed the attack on, on, on the forest itself and how much he, he like devastated the forest with his attack. But here they kinda took the liberty in the sense of 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 placing of placing Izuku, of Izuku using that technique on like a, a like a blank background, and, and they cut away to the devastation. So it's like it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a liberty they took I think in order to save on the animation budget or something. But yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of, of basically how they handled just just that one moment. Um, and. <sighs> 
And and getting back to the, now, obviously with this episode, another thing that was going on was of course the, the whole like the whole band stuff and, and and getting the whole and getting and class one A pretty much getting their whole uh, getting their whole like like figuring out how like how 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 they're gonna do this how they're gonna prepare for how they're gonna prepare for the festival and whatnot and yeah Bakugo he de there's one thing you can never deny about Bakugo and that's he, he basically says outright what he thinks and for as insensitive as Bakugo might have sounded in this episode he wasn't wrong either because if there's anything we've learned about UA at this point like everything at UA is basically treated as a competition and this cultural festival in some ways is no different it's like, if, if you really think about the bare bones of what the cultural festival is, it's basically a gigantic popularity contest. So Class 1A has to put everything into just this one performance like they do everything else in order to stand out. And one thing this really is going to highlight is how well they can work together as a team and working off each other's strengths. Uh, you could, you, and in that sense, you could also say what's going on with UA and Class 1A it strangely parallels what Gentle and Labrava are doing. They have Gentle and Labrava have a message they want to convey, but they're also fighting for the popularity in order to get it out. So, in in that sense, it's it's kind of a strange, it's a strange kind of parallel there too. Um, now, <clears throat> one thing we need to talk about is Jiro singing, because in the manga it was left sort of ambiguous of how well she could actually sing, but. Here we basically get a full-blown reveal of her singing, and and I don't know if the person singing was Jiro's actual voice actor, or if they got like an English, or if they got an English actor to come in to in order for the singing. But if it was, but but if if it was, then that was probably one of the smooth. But either way, that was probably one of the smoothest transitions from Japanese to English singing acting I've ever seen, which. Yeah, if you've ever seen a Japanese voice actor try to speak English, you'll know the usual results are hilariously bad. Looking at you, could have cut on a basket. But yeah, it was really smooth and really mellow with a soothing touch. So yeah, I'm, again, I'm not sure if that's her act that's Jiro's actual voice actor or if they brought in an English voice actor. I'm assuming the latter. But yeah, it was just a very smooth transition. Um... <clears throat> And also, if you'll notice, when Ida was listing off the students that would take part in each group, uh, you'll definitely notice Izuku got placed in the dance in in the dance group. So, yeah, he's so it shows again he's not going to be the focus here, <laughs> which uh, should be interesting in itself. Um, which yeah, is setting up that yeah, it's basically setting up what what I said before. This is not going to be your usual arc, like. It's, it's very unique in the sense where even if Izuku's focused on, he's not exactly going to be the actual focus. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Alistair Crunchyroll. Death Knight of Enemy, signing off. Later, guys.